I really hated the movie Jurassic World. I'm not going to get into every single issue I had with that movie, but I will tell you that my main issue with that film was the fact that Jurassic World as an amusement park had no reason to exist. 20 years or so earlier, you had a group of people that tried to do the same thing on a much smaller scale and it ended up with over half the park staff being eaten. One lawyer was eaten off a toilet. He was bitten in half in front of children. And then three years later, one of the T-Rexes actually managed to get off the island and eat four or five tourists in San Diego. In San Diego. And now, you mean to tell me that the world's top geneticists and a group of wealthy investors were able to get together to wrangle the necessary funds and the necessary brain power to make this all happen again? That just doesn't happen in real life. People usually listen to the lessons of history. That's why we study it. So we don't make the same mistakes that those in the past have made. History is like a blueprint for us of what to do and what not to do. And Jurassic World is definitely something history has taught us not to do. People died. It, it strains credulity. I, give me one example in the real world where someone just refused to listen to the lesson of history and make the same exact mistake that led to abject failure just a couple years earlier. I mean, nobody is that fucking stupid. Well, years of financial sector lobbying have succeeded in persuading the House of Representatives to approve the biggest rollback of banking rules since Dodd-Frank. Oh, I guess not that implausible. I guess some people are that stupid. I guess some people do refuse to learn the lessons that history is trying to teach them. I mean, what is going on? It just happened. 2008 just happened. The financial regulations were put in place after 2008 to make sure that 2008 didn't happen again. And they repealed them. Why? The legislation I'm signing today rolls back the crippling Dodd-Frank regulations that are crushing community banks and credit unions nationwide. They were in such trouble. Smaller market cap um, community-sized banks were struggling under the weight of Dodd-Frank, but of course not as badly as Trump likes, you know, wants you to believe. Um, a lot of people were saying that uh, the market cap for these smaller community-sized banks should be raised, including former Fed Chair Janet Yellen. The market cap for these smaller community-sized banks was previously $50 billion. Sensible people were calling for the market cap to be raised to $75 billion. Trump, with the help of some Democrats, went and raised the market cap to $250 billion. Their whole reason behind doing that was to stem the tide of, of, of consolidations. What they actually did was accelerated the tide of consolidations. It's already happening. The medium-sized banks are going down um, and swooping, swooping up the smaller banks because they have more room to play with. And these, some of these smaller community-sized banks are consolidating to become, you know, to reach that $250 billion market cap. You get four or five of these um, community bank managers to make the ba same bad decision at the same time, and you have a Lehman Brothers size problem on your hands. And that never happens, right? Like bankers all making the same bad decision at the same time. There's also a lot of consumer deregulation in this, things that make it harder to enforce laws against subprime lending, anti-steering mechanisms, and so forth. There's also a couple loopholes in here that primarily we think will benefit the largest players in terms of how easy it is to write rules that go forward, and also um, domestic subsidiaries, U.S. subsidiaries of foreign banks. So there's a lot in here across the board that goes way beyond just trying to provide some relief for community bankers. Eliminating consumer protections? 
making subprime lending a thing again, loopholes that make it easier for big banks to write rules for themselves. I, we've seen this movie before. We know where this is going. I'm sure the first couple of years of Jurassic World were great too. All the dinosaurs stayed where they were supposed to be. No one was getting eaten. And now Republicans are out there telling everyone and their mothers about the positive effects these deregulation measures have already had in our economy. And they're right. Rolling back financial regulations is always good for a short-term boost to our economy. But what always happens in the end? This is magnificent. Well, yeah, ooh, ah, that's how it always starts. But then later there's running and, and screaming. This has been a closer, wait, can't do that. This has been a closer look.